back uh, when I was uh, about 15 years ago. So I was learning with the Bachar in the mirror at the time, and I decided that I wanted to start learning with uh, a guy my own age. I felt like if I'm already learning in Koyal, I might as well learn with somebody who's my, on my level. And uh, I saw, the problem was that I needed the money I was being paid. That was my parnasa. So what am I going to do? So I said to myself, I need to speak to Gadosh Baruch and have a conversation with Gadosh Baruch Hu and uh, tell him the, the situation. So I went for a little walk and I had a conversation with Hashem and I said, Bayi Shalaylam, Bayi Shalaylam, here's the situation. I have enough money to last me till Sukkis and I want to stop learning with this Chavrusa because it's time for me to learn with my own age. And the problem is if I stop learning with the Chavrusa then I'm not going to have the money and I have money till Sukkis so I need to, you to make sure that I get a new source of income by the end of Sukkis. That's the story, because you want me to learn. I want to learn, but I need the money. I need a new source of income by the end of Sukkot. By the end of Sukkot, I have, till the last day of Sukkot, I have money, and after that, I need a new source of income. So Gaudish Baruch said, great, it's, I, I like what you're saying. I'm, I'm, I'm in. I'm in, Hashem said. I said, okay, you're in. I'm in. We're both in. We have a deal. All right. So I told my Chavrusa, I, incidentally, I'm still learning with Adi Yomazen until today, and I told him, all right, we're going to start. And I, now I'm waiting for Kaddish Baruch Hu to send me my new source of revenue, my new source of income to, to support me and my family because now I don't have this, this uh, income anymore. Every day I wake up in the morning and I wonder, where is the money going to come from? Is somebody coming over to me with a check? Is somebody coming with an envelope? Is it leaving it at my door? Am I outside my door? It's not me in the street. It's going to fly down from Shemayim. A bird's going to drop it on my porch. How is it going to come? Somebody's going to put it in my... I'm waiting. Akadosh Baruch Hu is going to do his part. I'm waiting. All right. Days go by. And nothing. No money. And I'm waiting for the money to come. I'm sure the money's going to come. We and Hashem have a deal. But I'm waiting for it. And so far, nothing's happening. Then comes Sukkot. Sukkot's time comes. And it's... We have my grandparents, my wife's grandparents... Irving and Helen Mazel, they used to have a minog. The minog was in Harnof. They used to make a party for the family on Sukkot, the Cholamayid. They'd make a party, and the whole family would come. Children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. It was a whole Gishmaka Matzav there, Cholamayid night. And we're all there on the porch. Big family, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, different types of people. Koyal Yonga Light, guys in the army, guys are working. It was Mamish, the whole mix, beautiful Jewish family. And in the middle of the party, there's a knock at the door, and my grandfather goes to open the door. My wife's grandfather opens the door, and what does he see? There's a man standing there. The man's name is Dr. Moshe Katz, and he lives in, 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 the, in the five towns. And he comes into the house. Now, I have to tell you who Dr. Moshe Katz is. Dr. Katz is, was Irving Maisel's best friend. Dr. Katz is an unbelievable person, and he was Irving Maisel's best friend. How did that happen? It's a story how they became friends. Like most, most great things in life, there's a story, and the story is the following. Irving Maisel, when his little boy Howie was old enough to go to nursery, Irving decided he wants to send him to a yeshiva, a local yeshiva in the five towns. He wasn't so from, but he wants his son to get a Jewish education. He goes to the yeshiva, he walks inside on a Sunday afternoon, he goes up to the office, and the guy sitting in the office, the bursar, and he says to him, Hello, my name is Uri Meizel, I have a son who's old enough for nursery, and I want to send him to learn by you. And the man says, that's very nice. The question is, do you have the funds to pay for a, for a religious school? He says, what do you mean? He says, the tuition is very high. Do you have that kind of money? So Irving Maisel looks at the man. He says, the truth is, I don't really have that kind of money. So the man says, then why are you here? So Irving Maisel says, I have a very good idea. I'm here because my idea is as I'm a contractor. I work for the New York City Housing Department. I'm a contractor, and I'm all willing to offer the school my services that if in case anything breaks in the school... I will be there to fix it. I will fix it. You call me, I'm going to fix it right away. So you're going to save a lot of money because you won't have to call contractors. And we all know how expensive contractors are. So you just call me and you'll save money. And that's how I'll pay the tuition. I'll pay some tuition, but anything extra that I owe you, I'll pay it off like that. 
And Irving thinks this is a good deal. And by the way, it is a good deal. But the man in the office said, you know what? Don't worry about our school. We'll take care of our school, he said. You don't have to get involved in the way we run our school. I have a better idea. Come back next year when your kids are going to go into kindergarten. And then he'll be, you'll be eligible for uh, tuition help from the government. So come back then. We'll get you a grant, whatever. We'll figure it out. Irving Maisel looks at the guy. And he's shocked. He says, I don't understand. I'm coming to you with my kid. I want to give my kid a Jewish education. Are you turning me down? How's that possible? I don't understand. I thought you would want to take my kid. Especially, I'm not, I'm not asking for your charity. It's not charity. I'm willing to pay. I'll be on, I'll be on your, your, you know, you call me anytime you want. I'll come by and I'll fix anything. I don't understand. And he gets really mad. He has a temper. It's a little bit of a temper, this Irving Maisel has. He has a temper. And his fuse is not so long. He's a little short, like dynamite. And he starts yelling at the guy in the office. He says, what kind of a Jew are you? I'm bringing you a Jewish kid for education, the chinuch, and you're turning it down? I don't understand you. How's that possible? And he starts yelling at the guy. Keep in mind, keep in mind, Irving Mezel worked for the New York City Housing Department. Construction workers aren't known for like Nakia Sapet. They're not known for like the biggest, you know, the cleanest mouths. And he starts yelling at this guy and he starts cursing him out like you can't even, the halls of the yeshiva never heard anything like that. The halls are like, whoa, what's going on over here? Irving is yelling at the top of his lungs. He's slamming doors. He is making a noise like you won't believe it. He storms out of the office. He starts walking down out of the school. He's screaming, I can't believe you. What kind of a school you go? He's over yeshiva. And he walks out of the school. He's so upset. And he starts going towards his car. Now, you know, Dr. Moshe Katz, the president of the school, sitting in his office. And he hears this guy screaming, Chai Vakai, on the top of his lungs, as if the world came to an end. Who knows what's going on? And he follows, he gets out, he leaves his office, and he goes out of, to, to the parking lot, and he follows the man to the car. And he, at the car, he stops him. He says, excuse me, sir. Yeah, and Irving Mizel looks at him and says, what do you want? He says, I, what do I want? I, I, I need a ride to Farakwe. Are you going to Farakwe? He says, hey, I'm going to Farakwe. So much cats and says goodbye to his car. It's parked right over there. And he says, I'll see you later. And he says, he gets to Irving Mizel's car. And, and, Irv, and they start leaving the, the, the school. And on the way, he says to Irving what was that about? And Irving Mizel says, he starts on the whole story. He's all worked up. And much cats looks at him and says, you know what? What you're offering is a good deal, he says. It's a good deal. I know, I, I'm the one who signs the checks, and you're a contractor, and I pay you how much money I spend on contractors. It's a very good deal. I'm willing to take it. Irvi says, I don't want charity. Much cat says, it's not charity. It's you're offering uh, something very, very important for me. I want the deal. Tomorrow I'm coming over to the house with the papers. And we'll sign it, and your son's going to be accepted to the school. And that's what happened. The next day, Maish Katz comes over to Irving Mizel's house with the papers, and he signs the papers. Mazel Tov, your son's accepted. Gavalik. And so starts a friendship that will last for 50 years. You understand this? It started because Maish Katz didn't ignore the shouts. He got out of his office, he got out of his swivel chair, and he followed the man out to the parking lot, and he asked him what was wrong, and he followed up with the situation, and he took care of it. That's called Chesed. That's called Ben Amma Chaveroi. Now listen to this. They become best friends. Best friends. You did a nefesh. Friends from the heart. A friendship that never wavered for the next 50 years. But listen to what happened. They moved next to each other. And every Shabbos, the Mezal started eating over there by the Katz family. Every Shabbos. It's Kavaldik. What a, what a friendship. But then what happens? The young Israel Farakaway want to make Irving vice president. But they said we can't make a man. It's not Shem Mishal. It's vice president. So they say, Maish, talk to Irving. Tell him we want to make a vice president, but he has to become Shem Shabbos. So Maish Katz takes his friend out to the deli. He says, oh, over coastal and pickles, he says, Irving, my buddy, this is the situation. The shul wants to make you VP, but you got to become Shem Shabbos. So what does Irving say? I'll speak to my wife. Talk to my wife. He goes home, he speaks to his wife, Helen. And they say, Nasev and Ishma. We're going to do it. And we'll hear afterwards. And they jump in and become Shem Shabbos. And Irving Mezel, you know what happens? He ends up building the shul in Farakaway. He built it. The young Israel of Farakaway. And every time Maish Katz drives past that shul, he says, I tell myself, he says to me, that's the shul that my friend Irving built. And now it's 50 years later. 
50 years. And Maish Katz walks up to the porch in Arnof where Irving Mezel with his wife and his kids and his grandchildren, his great grandchildren, the whole family, Shoei Mitoyer Mitzvah, all because Maish Katz got out of his chair, walked down the hall, followed him out, left his car in the parking lot, took a ride home. Unbelievable. And Irving Mezel puts his arm around Maish Katz. And he says to him, with tears in his eyes, he says, it's all yours, Moshe, he says. It's all yours. I was there. I watched it happen. Nobody had a, had a dry eye watching that. He points at all the family. Moshe, it's all yours, Moshe. It's all yours. And at the end of that night, guess what happened, everyone? Moshe Katz comes over to me. He says, Reb Nachman, I love your stories. You write an Amadio, I love your stories. I want to write a book about my family. I had ten siblings and nine of them survived the war. I want you to write that book. Come to my hotel. I'm staying at the King Salman Hotel. Come to my hotel the day after Yom Tov. You hear this, everyone? The day after Sukkot. That was the day I told the chef. True story. Happened to me. Come to my hotel the day after Sukkot. And we're going to talk about this. I came to his hotel. And we sat down, and I interviewed Moish Katz, the first interview, and we, at that time, we shook hands, and Moish wrote out the first check, and for the next half a year, every month, like clockwork, a check arrived in the mail, more than enough money that I needed to support my family. But not only that, because that led, that was just the beginning of a slew of projects. Baruch Hashem, today, my 35th book is about to be published in a few weeks. And it all, much of it started with that book, with Moish Katz, 9 out of 10, serialized in Amadiya, and eventually published with his Israel Bookshop. Started over there. And Ara Yoimazeh, I'm still reaping the fruits and the benefits from that deal that I made with Kaddish Baruch. It all started there. You understand this, everybody? And not only that, more than that, 50 years earlier, Kaddish Baruch, who said into, into uh operation, a whole slew of events, a whole chain of events that would lead to me meeting my wife. It all started in that parking lot. What a great story.